Stokers, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode 24 of the Going Deep with Chad and JT podcast. My name is Chad Kroger. I'm here with my compa, Dre. JT, what up? What up, dog? And today we are joined by a very special guest, our dog, JT's roommate, Joe. What up, Joe? Yo, what up, dogs? Joe, so, thrilled to have oh, you here, Oh, man, dude. it's so great to be here. I, I love podcasting. Same. Do you consider yourself a veteran of the genre? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting there, getting a lot of experience. I love the uh, the foam headphones. These are nice and comfortable. Yeah. I'm not a big earbuds guy, so it's I like wearing these. What what do you dislike about earbuds? Uh it just it's it hurts my ear after about uh, 2 minutes. It's very quick. Yeah. 2 minutes? Yeah, you stick it in there and it just it hurts. I, I don't like that. I like the nice foam soft on the ear but you know i can't imagine you wearing the foam ones because they're so big and like sort of ostentatious like i just imagine you being like i look ridiculous yeah i don't wear them out in public yeah so you don't listen to music in public no not really do you think it's rude to listen to music in public um yeah i I don't really like seeing that yeah why well I, i i prefer to see at least like the earbuds on people i don't yeah walking around i think like this on the street is a little obnoxious yeah I, I see what you're saying. So you're making a huge statement. You're like, I'm not going to listen to you. Yeah, it's just too much. It's like you're shutting out the whole world. It's like, come on, let let me, let me somebody in. What did people do in the 1850s, you think, when they wanted to shut out the world? Uh, they went uh, I don't know, in a cave or something. It's a good call. Yeah. Cave, they, cave's a pretty solid spot to just get in of, touch with yourself. They had a lot of caves back then. Yeah, for sure. They've all filled in. Oh, the caves have filled in? Yeah. Yeah. Overpopulation is what happens. That's that's kind of sucky that back then you couldn't just like be like, you know, I'm going to go to work and listen to tunes today. You had to be like, well, I got to get away, so I'm going to go hide in a dark, dank hole all day. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and dank. To listen to tunes, like, to listen to tunes, like, you had to like, you're like, hey, can you... Do the accordion player like, hey dude, can you like follow me to work? You know. Yeah. We take a lot of things for granted. You know, you can't just in the 1850s. You know, if you're like going to um do whatever you do, like be a sheriff, you can't put on Foo Fighters during like a high speed chase. No, you'd have to like hire whoever the Foo Fighters were of that time to like yeah. be in your toboggan or in your wagon with you while you're yeah. drawn by four abused quarter horses. Yeah. yeah. We have a lot of luxuries. Like, yeah, it's just we take for granted. I'm big into modernity. I love it. I think it's better to live now than like any time in history. Oh yeah, yeah. But on the but if you could go back to a time in history, where would you go? Probably like Greek and Roman times, so I could be a gladiator. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a lot of glory back then. I'm always I'm I'm super big into honor. I've been really into honor lately and like being honorable. And uh yeah, so I think that'd be a pretty epic time to like really take hold of honor. Um uh, you know, Achilles also and like Troy, like Brad Pitt, you know, he was just like that was just like honor incarnate. So if I could be him fighting Troy, I'd choose that. That'd be sweet. Yeah, I'd, I'd one-up you on that. I, I would, I'd want to be the emperor of Rome. Oh, you dog. Yeah. Well, nice. I just said time, so... Well, I guess, yeah, you picked a role, Whatever too. Uh, B.C. then. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember the dates, but... Uh, I, yeah, I'd say 1510 B.C. would be my ideal time. It's a good date. And you'd be emperor. Yeah, I want to be the emperor. I see you living a pretty, uh, to borrow a word from them, Spartan life as emperor there. Like, I don't see you being lavish. Like, do you just have, like, a lot of, like, Italian beef sandwiches and stuff? Yeah, we'd have Italian beef. Um, yeah, I'd wear the 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 leaves on my head. Those were cool crowns. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I got a good emperor look to me. That's true. Because I got yeah. a very, um, people used to say I'd have the, like, I'd look a little like Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I, I'd be cool. I wouldn't be like him. He's, you know. Hooking up with his sister. Yeah, we're not doing that. And you, you live by, you, John and I have discussed this. You live by, like, a, a code. And I think people would really respect that. You know, I think you'd be a stern leader. 
Yeah. But like people would respect your sternness. You wouldn't just be like some jackass. Yeah, because you you could tell it wasn't coming from a place of like power hungriness. It was coming yeah. from a place of like duty. Yeah. So you wouldn't get like Julius Caesar. If like people if like people were to like stab you, you'd be like, oh jeez. Yeah, I, I would expect a couple attempted stabbings. Yeah. How how do you think you'd respond to it? I think I think Chad pretty much nailed it there though. Can we can we can we make believe I stab you real quick and we'll get your reaction? All right. Ah, damn. Yeah, it would hurt. That would hurt. If I lived in an era, I'd live in the uh, the 1980s. Cause you guys know me, I love to dance. And oh, just, dude, like, go yeah, out. good call. Oh, that'd yeah. Be cool. yeah, dude, that's a great call. Oh, what age would you be? I'd be 25 years old, living in New York City. When Thriller came out, and I'd be wearing suits, but not like a yuppie, but basically a yuppie, but like self-aware, and I'd just be dancing all the time. Joe, what a, what a, what's been like a spicing up your life lately? Like, what's got you excited? Um, well, I just got this haircut yesterday, uh, ready for summer, uh, clean shave. Yeah, you look that, good. Yeah, that always makes me feel great because. Uh, yeah, but like people always ask me, like, why do you clean shave? Like, you don't have like a regular job where you need to do that. Because I like how it feels. Yeah, yeah. You know, I like the way it looks and the way it feels when I'm when I go to when I'm sleeping. Like when you lay on the pillow with a, a fresh face, you know, it feels great. It's soothing. It's you know, it's it feels cool on the pillow. Yeah, it's a look the part, be the part. I think I think especially coming into the summer season, you want to be your most polished self. Yeah, I agree. I I always like to have a fresh shave whenever i don't like i don't like when i have stubble it's, it's just not me like whenever i have stubble like I'll, I'll look in the mirror and i'm just like it's too puby you know i don't even think it's that puby i just I, it just looks dirty to me you know yeah well you got a uh, you got a great face oh thank you well yeah that's the thing i'm just, i'm so good looking i gotta i want to yeah. keep that you, you, wanna, gotta, you gotta see my whole face. Yeah, lead with your best asset yeah you want to show those cheeks yeah that i mean jaw. When I, yeah when i had a beard like I was getting a lot of compliments too, but I'd rather just go natural. I feel like the beard's like a it's like a mask in a way. Mm-hmm. I'm a five o'clock shadow guy. Yeah, you you always have some kind of beard going. On. Yeah, but I, never I, a full beard. No, and I never fully shave. I just use a clipper without the uh, clipper on it. Yeah, the electric. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I go uh, full blade, five blades, gel. You're putting a tone on that, like you uh, you think you're. Like, is it more masculine than me because of the blade? Yeah, because there's the, that element of danger there. You might cut yourself. Yeah. I'm, I'm for taking a, sec- a risk every time. For a second there, I thought I was being insecure in that assumption about you, but then it, it turned out to be valid. Yeah. I go I go blade to the skin. I'm a Gillette Mach 3 guy. Oh, really? Mach 3. I go Gillette, uh, Gillette Power Pro Glide. Is that five blades? Five blades, yeah. I need five. Minimum. I'd go ten if they had it. I've heard that the... Yeah. You go ten blades? I would, yeah. Would, would that fit on your face? Yeah, it would fit. I had a thick beard. Would there be any stroking, or you just sort of like touch it to your face? and? No, you, you, wouldn't, you can't stroke. You gotta go just slow glide. Hmm. Ten blades. The specificity of your process is remarkable. Yeah. What kind of shaving cream do you use? You, it, you seem like a barbasol guy. No, I yeah. got, I'm I'm a Edge Pro Gel, the orange one. Hmm. I got different colors. I go or, orange is the sensitive skin. Do you go sensitive skin? Yeah. Do you have sensitive skin? Uh, well, it seems to be working. Did you Did you always have such a particular philosophy on life? Yeah, I would say. Like when you were like 13, were you like, like your friends were like, oh, I'll just use any deodorant. And you were like, no, I only use Old Spice Yacht. No, back then I was experimenting. Yacht? I I just, I don't know. No, deodorants, (laughs) uh, that was a work in progress for a while. Um, I used to use, yeah, all different ones. The the one, uh, 
it was like the the gel ones, but those never worked for me. It was always Dude, like those wet. Are so, they're so wet. Yeah, yeah you put they're it on so your, wet. And you're like, yeah. what? I just fucking take it. It seemed a like the cool thing to do. I think it was like right guard or something. And yeah. Then, uh, it would stain your t shirts. Like you'd put on your t shirt afterwards and be yeah. like just globs of wetness. It, like it would, you'd you'd come out, out your arms. It would come out like spaghetti. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it but, looked gross. But for yeah. a while now, I've been using, um, yeah, I believe it's. It's a right guard, but the white one, Arctic Refresh, is my uh, scent. That's a good flavor. Nice. Yeah, I, I won't deviate. You're a good smelling guy, too. Every time I go in your room, there's no smell. That's like the optimal smell. Like there's, I just walk in there, and I'm like, I just walked into air. Oh, good. Yeah, because... You could work in a lot of places. You could work in, a, in an office or at a lumber yard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can go that. I, I got that range. Yeah. All right, guys. Let's get into the news. Oh, sure. Did you guys... Um, so there's this rich guy in uh, Laguna Beach. Great city. Yeah. It's, Dude, it's yes. Yeah. Who, uh, he lost his like $20 million home to his uh, wife in the divorce. So before he had to... She sounds hot. Before he had to, <laughs> before he had to legally turn it over, he um, covered the whole house in a fart spray. Like he bought like concentrated fart spray and he um, unleashed it all over the home before he turned it over to her. Now she's suing him because the house is like apparently uninhabitable. Dude, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it's kind of a, an immature move. If I were in like fourth grade and like I was getting divorced and like <laughs> had to leave my house to my ex, I'd totally fart it up. But if you're in your, like your 30s, I'd come with something a little more sophisticated. He's in his 50s. There we go. You know, like if you feel like you farted all over my house. All right, later. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would kind of exp- like your wife would be like, "This is why we're getting divorced." My my dad told me the story a story about this guy who now this is cool. He's getting divorced from his wife, and he bought her a car or something. And then she was getting the car, so he drove the car for an hour, pedal to the metal in first gear, burned through the whole clutch, and destroyed the brakes and gave it to her. Yeah, that's a very adult move. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but I I think this fart thing is pretty, I'd call it uh, legendary. I think it's amazing. Why? Because farts, no matter what age you are, are always smell, and it's always, you always got to get out of the room. Like, whenever you smell a bad fart, you're like, oh, this is the worst. Yeah, that's that's an excellent point. I mean, it's an age-old thing. Yeah. You know, farts will always smell, I don't no matter really what f- age you are. And, uh, you know, if you're 50 and you want to... I think the, 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 the... Not to take exception to what you're saying, but I think the, the crux of what we were saying wasn't that uh, farts stop smelling. It's that they stop being as funny. Oh, no, I, I, I disagree. What, if this guy's a billionaire? I mean, he's, he must be smart, so he knows. I'm on the side of the billionaire. You don't get that rich by uh, being stupid. I, he knows that the fart thing was a genius move. But what did he leave the cans behind? He left all the evidence. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where he messed it up. How did? Why are you leaving the evidence behind? Yeah. He like wanted to rub her face in it. Dude, then maybe she would have been walking around being like, "Oh, what did I eat?" You know, maybe she thinks she's smelling up the place. Dude, I like what you're saying. Maybe I shouldn't have had the chili. You know. All made her question herself. Yeah. Whoa. Dude, I, I like what you're saying because I I feel like if you were to ask the guy, he would say the same thing. Like farts smell bad whenever, wherever, whenever you are. Yeah. Uh, did you guys uh, or I showed you guys. So like Burger King, um, was gonna give out free burgers forever to any woman who had been impregnated by a soccer player in the World Cup. Yeah, and, and where was where would be the uh, what do you have to bring in the DNA? That's what I wasn't sure about. I was like, how do you prove that you your baby was bone created by a, a soccer? Or player? did somebody just think that was a funny marketing thing? Yeah, but I do think they were genuinely going to do it. I don't know how they were going to get proof though. Why wow. it seems like a total BS thing. Like, wait, so exactly was like if you get impregnated by a World Cup soccer player, you get what? free whoppers for life or something? Yeah. Yeah, it just sounds like a... A bad joke. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, because there's no way that would be... Yeah, what do you bring in the birth certificate and... Uh, 
whatever his name, uh, here he is, here's the father, yeah, that's, yeah, it's just, I think it was just a bad joke. Burger, do you guys like Burger King? Dude, yeah. Uh, I typically don't go, I'll, I'll go about once a year. Nice. Every now and then I'll go for the two for six. They have a two for six? Yeah, game? you get like a Whopper, uh, you can mix and match. Damn. You can get a Whopper and a chicken sandwich for six bucks. Dude, I I did like their chicken tenders. I do like the Whopper. Yeah, chicken they, they, f- chicken fries are good. Dude, and their chicken sandwich along with yeah, mayo. Yeah, the original chicken sandwich dude, that is really good. I do forget fire. about that. I, yeah, okay, I'm gonna, yeah. I think I'm gonna go get one today. Yeah, d- and they put the mayo on it. I fuck. Oh, I haven't been. In, yeah, I haven't been in the, a good amount of lettuce. It's not too much lettuce because most places yeah. will overdo the lettuce. Yeah, I'm I'm not a big fan of lettuce on burgers anyways. It's like I don't I don't understand its purpose. There's no taste. I like the crunch. It adds uh there's a texture oh, the there. Crunch, for sure. I just do meat and cheese on my burgers. Yeah. No onion. I do grilled onions at In and Out. I like raw. Why? Uh it's it's just better, I think. Do you are you like a natural person? Like do you like most things like in their natural form? Uh, I don't, what is that? What? I don't quite know what I mean. Yeah, I don't know what that means. What, uh, what, what would you say was like, like potatoes? No, what were you going to say? No, like potatoes raw. That's a good point. You don't like potatoes raw. Right, yeah, I don't. Yeah. What are the things you're most looking for in a partner? Um, very good question. I like, uh, attractive first. Um, that's pretty obvious. Like, if she's, like, a really sweet 7, or, like, kind of a a nasty 10, like a mean 10? Probably a mean 10. Yeah, yeah. because I feel like, uh, you know, I could... So you don't think it's... A, it's not fixed. Like, you'll get her to be nicer just by virtue of her hanging out with you and stuff? That would be my hope. Yeah, I, li- I like, uh... I- you know, attract. I like funny. I I like funny a lot. That's always big for me. Um, if you can make me laugh, I I love that. You know, I'm not one of these guys that oh, I need to be the funny one. No, I don't care. Is that your favorite thing to do to laugh? One of them, yeah. Laugh or eat. Tough call. Yeah, I'd say eat. Dude. What about for you? I laugh. What about you? It's so tough. I think I have to go eat. Dude, I love nah, nah, I just I love to laugh. That's beautiful. I eat. love to watch Robert Downey Jr. and Tropic Thunder and laugh for like days. Just crack up. That's cool. I, eating can bring laughter though. That's true. Uh, yeah. But it does stifle your laugh a little bit. It's harder to laugh when you have food in your mouth. Yeah, it could be. But I'm having a good time if I'm eating a... Uh, Wendy's four for four, you know, by yourself. Yeah, smiling while I'm eating it. I'll, one thing I'll do is I'll like be cracking myself up, and then I'll send people a text, basically of like the thing I'm thinking of. I don't think they ever get it, you know, because it's just in my head. Like I'll just send them a random Tom Cruise GIF, right? And they'll be like, "What is this?" I'm like, "Is it hilarious?" And they're like. I'm like, I guess he had to be there. Sometimes like, you'll send me shit like you'll send me shit like that a lot. I'm like, it's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, you think it's hilarious? Yeah. You're basically just sending like positive memories to me, so it's nice to think about. Yeah. Because then I'm like, oh yeah, that was really cool. Life is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I'll send stuff to girls though, and they'll like, <laughs> like I sent this one text. Uh, this guy commented on one of our YouTubes, uh, the Paul Walker one. He goes. Dude's a loser. <laughs> About you? Yeah. So I sent it to this girl. I'm like, was this you? She didn't respond. As a joke? Yeah. That's funny. That's yeah, funny, that's right? Funny. Yeah. It's really funny. Yeah, it's really funny. I don't know why she didn't respond. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, I mean, some, I've sent, like, the funniest messages to people on, like, on, like, uh, Tinder or, like, uh, Bumble or whatever and gotten yeah. no response. Yeah, I always yeah. go for funny. Yeah. I don't think the quality of your statement 
really impacts that much the response. Yeah, if they don't, if they yeah. don't respond or like laugh at it, then you're like, okay, well, we probably wouldn't be cool to hang out with you anyways, lamo. Yeah, it's a smart, yeah. it's a smart test to just be yeah. like, is this person like, do they have like, it's like a dog whistle, like, do they hear it? Yeah, are we on the same page? Yeah, maybe I should text. That was that was a while ago that that happened, but maybe I should still text her now. You know. Yeah. Be like, even though it was two months ago, I'd be like, now I know. Yeah, I'd be like, hey, sorry for a long time. I thought you didn't get the joke, but now I'm realizing you might not even have tried to get it. So let me explain why it's funny. Yeah. And all the, and by the way, yeah, Joe and I agree that you're a lamo. Yeah. Do you call people lamos a lot? No, I just it's, I said that just a few minutes ago for the, probably the first time. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. Joe, who is your babe of the week? Babe of the week, uh, I would have to say uh, Colin Farrell. I saw him, and he looks great. He's got this silver fox thing going now. Nice. You know, he's getting a little Sweet. older. And, yeah, he was, like, in shape. Uh, you know, I just saw him on the street, and he was, like, yeah, like, gray mixed in with the black and just still in shape. He he looked, he was pretty tall. I didn't realize that. He was, like, probably six foot or six one. And I was like, wow, this guy's got it together still. Shit. Nice. Well, yeah, I think he's more together now than he's ever been. He's sober. He's got a family. He's he's dialed in. Yeah, he looked great. I love that. I'm a huge Farrell fan. Dude, I watch that SWAT scene all the time to get me pumped up. I'm like, I need to work out. And I'll watch Tom or uh, Colin Farrell. Sorry, I'm always always thinking about Tom Cruise. I'll watch Colin Farrell running on the beach doing pull-ups on the lifeguard tower. I'm like, if Colin, thank you, Colin, for that inspo. And I do it. How could you tell he was in good shape? Was he wearing like a tight tee or something? Yeah, he had a sleeveless tee on. Yeah. Ooh. Nice. So he was showing off the guns. Oh, yeah. How are his guns? Pretty decent. Yeah. They're like dude. they're like shaped, but they're not like bulky. Right. Yeah, dude, whenever... He had I, some good tone to him. Yeah, whenever I see him in SWAT, I'm like, he's not bulky, he's just toned, but he looks strong. You know, like a fighter. He's fit. They're yeah. like... They're, like, they're, they're not that They're not that thick, but like that muscle is... You know, yeah, I'd say he had that yeah. body yeah. type. Yeah, where'd you see him at? Uh, it was a grocery store. What a beast. Trader Joe's. No, uh, Erewhon. He was at Erewhon. He's at Erewhon. Yeah. That's crazy. I go there so I'm much. And I haven't plug seen them. Him. I don't know. Um, yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, was he getting the green juice? He was. Yeah, he was in the coffee juice line. Dude. Fuck, I'm there all the time. I'm gonna see his ass. I'm gonna say, Colin, what up? Chad, see money. Who's your baby of the week? My baby of the week is my uh, babysitter, Candy. My baby sounds hot. I think she was pretty hot. I was like six or seven at the time, so I can't accurately say. Um, it's good you had a stripper for a babysitter. Whoa, dude, that's my that's my baby of the week. Yeah, come on, man. I I, I do appreciate the joke. Um, yeah, and make money however you have to. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I'm nothing against strippers. Um, Candy with an eye. I think it was with a Y. Oh, okay. Why do you know her? No, I'd say he could maybe not strip her if it's Candy with a Y then. Yeah. I th- so Candy, uh, I don't know if you guys have watched any of our music videos, but I do pride myself on having some pretty dank moves. Um, And Candy is the reason why, because she made me watch Michael Jackson music videos every time we hung out. And so... At a young age, I was like, whoa, this guy is electric. He can dance. And uh, so even at a young age, Candy, she like she showed me how to moonwalk. And that stuck with me. And then that, that transferred into all other moves. I've never really taken a dance class. But um, just her showing me Michael at a young age and teaching me how to moonwalk transferred into all other dance moves. So, Candy, I just want to say thank you for being uh, such a babe. Thank you for being such a fire babysitter and, like, exposing me to like a huge influence in my life um thank you for being the coolest and thank you for making me dino nuggets a lot and spaghettios uh i miss you and if you're listening uh, let's kick it and watch let's watch thriller billy jean the way you make me feel and the bad music video nice yeah i can see his influence in your dancing Are you, oh thank yeah. you thank you i love that thank you who's your babe 
My baby of the week is my girlfriend. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it's long overdue. Oh, my girlfriend. <laughs> nice. Oh, sorry. No, I'm taking a chance doing this in front of Joe. I knew he was going to come down on me for being soft. Nice, Joe. Take it to him. Yeah. But you and her get along, like, fabulously. She's great, yeah. Yeah, I, like I, would, I would say you guys, like, almost love each other, and, <laughs> and, and you don't even know each other that well. Yeah, I guess we really don't. She adores you. Like, she's always like, Joe is just the best. I can just tell he's a great guy. You know, I, yeah, I, we hung out yesterday after you guys hung out. Yeah, it was comfortable. Yeah, she's yeah. I have the feelings mutual. Yeah, so I just like really love her, and um, we've been in each other's lives for a long time. The thing I like is um, she challenges me. You know, is that a weird thing to like about your partner? No, no, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I think like when I'm with her, I'm like, oh, I can't be like a lazy dummy. Like I actually have to be like, like she makes me more of a man. Cause like, cause sometimes I can sag in that department. I'll just be like, I'm just gonna chill. You know? No, yeah, you can't. But she's like, no, like, you gotta, like, she's like, I believe in you. So if I believe in you, you need to be the you I believe in. And I'm like, whoa. Yeah, that's great to have that. Yeah. yeah. That's what you want. And she's you don't just, want to be complacent. Nah, yeah. And she's just a sweetie. She, like, always wants to give me hugs and kisses. So I always, like, feel like, um, like affection. You know what I mean? And sure. it's just nice because you can, like, go through your life and you're like, you're like, does like what can I count on? And then I can always be like, oh, I can count on the fact that she like she loves me. That's cool. And, and she's seen me in a lot of different stages of my life, so she kind of knows the whole me. You know, you meet people. This is like you meet people later, and they just know like a bit, but yeah. like she you, knows. You guys the are like kind of like Kevin and Winnie. Yeah. The Wonder Years. Yeah. And she's just so smart and so pretty and so funny, and um, she has so much charisma. Like, she really does. Like, when, when I go places with her, I just marvel at the way she, like, gets on with people. It's a, it's a master class. I feel like I'm on one of those master classes, but instead of, like, Aaron Sorkin teaching me how to write a script, she's, like, teaching me how to, like, be light as a feather in the world. Nice. nice. Thanks, guys. That was beautiful. I love you, Snuggles. All right, dude. Snuggles, yeah. I call her. I call her Snuggle Butts. Pumpkin nut. Pumpkin nut. Yeah, she's my Snuggle Butt pumpkin nut. All right. Okay. I'll let you have that. I kind. I want you guys to bash me. You know, I deserve it. Because you want us to bash you, I'm not. Dude, she's strong. She is like a really good athlete. She was like a, a college volleyball player. So she's kind of like. Good athlete like me, kind of. I'd say she's a few cuts above you. All right, well, she Joe, can, Joe scored touchdowns. Yeah, I'm very good. She, I think she was like a Orange a, County volleyball player of the year. I was a quarterback. Or that's Orange the, County uh, athlete, the, of the, the year. ultimate leader in sports. Not too many men could do that. No, that's true. That's a more difficult position. But the level yeah. that you were playing at was a few levels below where she was playing at. Oh, her her, her, oh, sport. oh, you mean playing varsity as a junior? Okay, yeah. It's, uh, well, I mean. In high school, she played like with like Olympians. No, I don't get the comparison. You're the JV quarterback. No, I was no a varsity, not JV. But didn't you go to like a small school and you guys played like other? Doesn't matter. What was your record? Four and five. Middle of the road. That's it's fine. How many kids were at your high school? Uh, I think it was like 800 to 1,000. All boys? Yeah, it was all men. Joe, who is your Legend of the Week? Legend of the Week uh, is my mom, actually. Because nice. she, uh, well, she broke her arm. Oh, oh no. no. Recently? Yeah, yeah. Just had surgery on it. And uh, she, she, act, she's act, she acts like nothing even happened. It's like she's not even like depressed or mad about it she just like just talking to her is like normal she's just like oh this is just like a thing like yeah she's acting like it's just like a scratch and me i'd be like devastated but yeah i mean she you know she's in her 60s and that's like not an easy heel and she's just rolling with it how'd you find out beast um well my dad texted me a picture of her in the cast he's like oh mom fell down and yeah, and then uh, yeah, and then talked to her on the phone, and 
Yeah, she fell in the backyard. It's tough. Dude, props to her for being maintaining Stoke through uh, through a broken yeah, arm. Yeah, she's maintained Stoke. Yeah. Has she always been like tough? Yeah. Yeah. Is that where you think you get your grit from? Yeah, I feel like yeah, I think we have a very similar demeanor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. I've never met your mom, but I, I'd like to just so I could sort of feel that uh, that energy of like toughness. Yeah, tough lady. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is where Joe came from. And she'd be like, "Yeah," and, and now she joins me as, as having a metal arm too, which is cool. You have a metal she had arm. Yeah, I got metal in there. Yeah, I got metal in there. Nice. Is that from Jobo the, uh, Cop. the softball injury? Or no, from... this was uh, this was my senior year of high school. Were you still the starting quarterback? No, I senior played year? defense senior year. Oh, so you lost your job? I didn't lose my job. The uh, sorry to get excited, but uh, well, the thing was, I started. I had it was a real life John Moxon situation from Varsity Blues. We've reviewed the film for our Patreon. Oh, great! Members. Yeah, it was probably the best film ever made um but anyways the uh yeah the starter got hurt um and then so i stepped in we were both juniors so he was the starter so senior year he was you know he was healthy um so he there actually wasn't even a competition for the job it was just like they were just like uh you know you're gonna play defense like, I didn't even, there wasn't a competition. Like, I, I kind of wanted to still be the quarterback, but I was, I, I always liked playing defense, so I was fine with it. What was it, outside linebacker? No, uh, I played corner, cornerback. Nice. Yeah. So you got wheels. Chad, who is your legend of the week? Uh, my legend of the week is uh, Miller B. Nice. One of my dogs from college. Um, What up, Miller? I think Miller listens, so what up? Miller's a legend, dude. He's uh, part of the Top Gun crew at, at college. I lived in Cream Pie House. Um, Top Gun and Cream Pie were really pretty uh, friendly with each other. We part, we raged together a solid amount. Um, and Miller's just he's just like the solid dude. There for all of his dogs. Always down to party. Always down to kick it. Always down to have a deep conversation. Always down to watch surf videos for like hours, you know. And he's like one of my dogs who can, you know, he's not even really that into surfing, but he's just like, he's so into uh, companionship and just being one of the dudes that like he can watch something that he's not really into and, and enjoy it, which I think is a great quality. He's just like a good, solid dude that you can count on in times of need, you know, like it was the year I had to sneak into Coachella and he was there like waiting at the exit where I was sneaking in. So making sure I always got in, you know, cause I didn't have a ticket that year. Um, so Miller, do you, dude, you're a legend. That's to, so key he, he, for friend yeah. groups to have a guy who just like believes in the, the group. Yeah. yeah. He brings that aura to like each interaction. I was going to breathe there. Interaction. Joe, you seem like one of those guys too. Yeah, you know what I was. Chad was saying that I was like, yeah, um, I was like, it sounds like me a lot, yeah. like a good glue guy. It's like it's hard to talk in a group of like six guys, but you're like one of the best at it. Yeah, I'm. Uh, well, the thing is, when I'm in a, like a bigger group, I kind of, I, I never really take the lead. Um, I'm kind of, uh, kind of just sit back, but I, I'll, I'll get. Uh, I'll get some important lines in there. You're like the glue for every squad, you know? Yeah. Not just one squad. Every squad you go to, you're like, oh, Joe's keeping this together. Has there been friend groups that you've kind of like been like, I can't be in this because it's just not the right vibe for me? Or do you kind of find the positive in them all? Uh, no, I mean, I've left friend groups before, yeah. But. That's hard. Yeah, it can be hard to do, but. You have to do uh, what feels right. How do you how do you broach the subject? Are you just like guys? We're no longer boys, or you just sort of bounce? I've done that before. Yeah, it's hard. It's like a breakup. What'd you say? <laughs> um, just yeah, just kind of like that. Like, uh, like a, you know, I don't, I don't really want to be friends anymore. It's that's a it's a difficult thing to do. It's weird. It's up front though. I respect. But it. you got to. Um, you gotta, yeah, you gotta do it if you're, yeah, it's better than just ignoring the person because then 
they're going to keep hitting you up and just wondering what goes on. It's better to be straightforward in a situation like that. Because mm-hmm. it's like guys. Like, I guess, like, like people do ghosting now, like, in dating. But, like, if you've already established, like, that you've hung out with this person a lot, you know, it's a classy move to at least tell them, like, I don't want to anymore instead of just leaving them wondering. And you had to do it because, like, you felt like you were just becoming a version of yourself you didn't like as much, so you needed to kind of, like, protect that, and that's why you had to initiate the breakup? Yes, pretty much, yeah. My legend of the week is my old boss at uh, Nordstrom, Sam. So I talked a little bit about working at uh, Nordstrom's with uh, Strider last week. Uh, There's a busy season there where they go into sale. I forget what the name of it is. But uh, it's just a crazy time where, like, they do, like, 80% of their business in this two-week period. And it's impossibly stressful. So I was working... Like between Thanksgiving and Christmas? uh, Ours was in the summer season. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's when I worked there. And then during this time, like, I was downloading like palettes and like breaking down like all the makeup that came in the boxes and then shelving it like during this time you'd get 10 times as much makeup and it was really hard for every department not just makeup to take on this influx of stuff and to be ready for this seasons of sales and sam put a lot of pressure on me he's like dude i'm counting on you to like set the tempo with everybody i need you to step up for me i need you to be good at this gig and i dug that because i was like sam believes in me so i got to be good for Sam. So I worked my ass off and I never knew if Sam was noticing. And sometimes I get frustrated with him because he'd put more work on me or he changed what he, what I was supposed to do. And I just felt like it was a moving target sometimes, but it's hard to be a boss. So I think he was just doing the best he could, but we ended up having a really good season. Everything went smoothly. We all worked our asses off. We all looked 10 years older by the end of it. This was probably three weeks of work. And then, um, at the company party to like celebrate the end of it, Sam had gotten me, so I got to backtrack here. Sam had gotten me into this uh, podcast called Hardcore History, which I've mentioned on here before, which is just uh, this guy breaking down big sagas from history. And uh, Sam was like, hey, you like podcasts, you like history, you should listen to it. So I started listening to it. And we were both really into the one about World War One. And at World War One, the biggest battle was called Verdun, and the guys were in trenches. And when you were in the trenches, you were just getting hit with mortar fire and machine guns. So you'd be hidden all day and to like, get a break from the shell shock guys would make little pieces of art with stuff they found. It's called like trench art. So Sam got me really into it. I was super into it and we talk all the time about it. Then at the company party, Sam comes up to me and he goes, I got something for you. And he pulls out a bullet that has like a uh, flattened piece of sheet metal on it with poetry written into it. It was one of the artifacts from Verdun and he gave it to me to basically say, Hey, we went to war together, but we survived. And I'm thankful for the sacrifices you made with me. That's that's cool. Yeah. Solid dude. Yeah. Yeah, I still have it. I keep it in my car and I grab it whenever I go to do something big. Oh, wow. Oh, do you really? Yeah. That's cool. Hell yeah. That's sweet. Is, is, hard, is Hardcore History still doing its thing? Yeah, dude, it's amazing. Yeah, big Rex I would give is Wrath of the Khan, which is about Genghis Khan. That's where I got all my information when I made Obadiah My Legend. And then... Uh, Damn, what was the name of the World War One one? It's like Age of Apocalypse. I know I got it wrong, but that one's also really, really good. Forgive me for not remembering. That's sweet. Who is your beef of the week, Joe? Um, it can be a thing too. Yep. Uh, my beef of the week is with uh, acne. I've uh, it's been I've been getting a decent amount of it in my forehead lately. Lately, and um. I feel like I've outgrown it, and I don't like that it's coming back. I haven't had it for a while, and I don't know why it's here, and I'm not digging it. If you, even, you know, you think you outgrow stuff. Like, why would you, I'm gonna, you know, I'm an, I'm an adult. I don't want this acne now. It looks good on you. No, it doesn't. It doesn't look bad. It's like that one right there, and you're still handsome. There's not that one. Yeah. There's here. There's here. It's 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 all over. There's like a good three. I do see the other two that you pointed to. The lighting made it hard to see them. But in total sincerity. You look good. Well, they're starting to disintegrate, but. How are you combating it? Washing my face like I always do. That's why I don't know why. What do you use? 
I got like this clean and clear stuff. Do you wear hats now? No, I think he that wears, was he wears hats once in a uh, while. Sometimes, but yeah, I think that was part was of the it. The culprit. Yeah. Maybe you need to bronze more. A little sun would help too. All right. Yeah, I could do that. Maybe you need to go surf. Get some ocean water. Surf. Ocean water, dude. I never have acne in the summer because I'm in the water so much. Yeah. Clears that shit up quick. Dude. Yeah, go in the ocean. All right. We'll go together. I'll give you a surf lesson. I don't know. I'm scared. You're scared of what? The water. You afraid of the unknown? Like in the water? Like because you, you don't know what's under? Yeah, I don't know what's in there. Nothing. It's kind of like death. Like we're like a bird flying over the ocean. We don't know what's underneath the water. Solid metaphor. Chad, who is your beef of the week? My beef of the week is with my old boss, Pat. What up, Pat? Uh, I'm a surf instructor. And uh, for a while, I was working with a surf school. And um, it was it was a pretty solid gig, you know, and like it, it was a lot of fun during the summer. Good tips, good clientele. After a couple of years, I was like, I need to branch out and go on my own. I need to do, to do my own privates, you know. And also, like, I like to have my own schedule, and I wanted to make my own schedule, you know. Like, there's certain things I like to do, like if Jurassic World is coming out or like something like that. I don't want to be working. I want to be like seeing the movie, you know. I'm I'm really into um, not working when I don't want to. Um, so that's sort of why I wanted to go solo. So that's what I did. I'm going solo for about six months and I get an email from my old boss. He's like, what up, Chad? This is Pat. I heard you started your own little surf thing. You're going to need to cease and desist. And I was like, what? And he's like, you're going to need to cease and desist or we're going to sue you because you signed a non-compete agreement. And I'm like, dude, I don't even know what I signed. I don't read shit. And he's like, well, you signed it. I'm like, you know what? Let's just settle this by the pier, Pat. And he's like, don't make me get the legal eagles into it. So we just went back and forth for a little bit. And I just want to say it's really lame to like try and claim ownership over the beach and like determine who can teach lessons and who can't. It's kind of a spiritual thing. And Pat, for you to like try and bring law into that i think it's like the most unsurfing thing you can do so i think you need to think about that before you try to get all business like on me i was just trying to spread stoke and joy through shred lessons and you know um you know it's a great way to 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 converse with not only you know with solid dudes and solid chicks you know and um i was getting to know people from europe and germany and and uh other countries <laughs> which was dank and for you to just like try and like harsh my new business venture with a cease and desist letter uh i just think that's very uncool and the beach is the beach and you can't bring a cease and desist authority to that you can hit me with legal jargon all you want but fuck you that's my beef yeah let him have nice. it thank you nice chad yeah pat you don't own the beach. Thank you, Jeff. Nice. Yeah, you're welcome. My beef of the week is a very controversial one. It may even seem kind of antithetical to everything I believe in, but my beef of the week is with uh, The Rock. Wow. I don't know if you should continue. Yeah. I'm quoting my I'm gonna brother. Have to hold, we're going to have to stop you. Yeah. No, go ahead. I yeah, do it. I just feel like He's so like. I think he's phony. You think? He, <clears throat> I you think, think he's Ellen DeGeneres. You think you should not, go for quality over quantity? A little bit of that, but also it's just like he's he's like, oh, I believe in this the most. Oh, I love this the most. Oh, I believe in this the most. Oh, I love this the most. But it's like he's saying that about everything. Oh, right. You know, I am concerned. That The Rock has gone the Ellen direction and he's not fully being himself. You think he's disingenuous? Oh, uh, yeah, but he, I mean, the guy has such a great life. It's easy to see why he would be so positive about everything. I mean, that's kind of. He is a beast. He is a beast. I mean, I guess I, I, I would say, you know, how, how could you be, how could you have a negative outlook on anything when you have what he has? 
and the life that he's built for himself and his family. It's like, why, why would you not be positive about everything? I don't, I don't know. If do you guys, do you guys like, I'm, 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 I'm embarrassed now and nervous. Do you guys like, is it, you guys pro rock? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I appreciate your argument though. Here's, here's Trying my to go take. out, really going out on a limb. Here's my take. Whenever I see him giving praise to his elliptical machine, I'm like, why are you giving praise to an elliptical machine? Why aren't you doing sprints? Number one, qualm. Number two, qualm. That's what I'm talking about. If you, You're bummed by all his positivity. I'd like to see him in a room. You know, like when we met Herb, we're like, Whoa, oh yeah, he'd win he, me over. He's radiating positivity. Yeah, I think The Rock would do the same thing. Although I like the way Tom Cruise does it, where he, he's not like, he's not like just like being like, I love all this, I love all that. He just comes out with like fire hits. Yeah, so maybe The Rock needs to take a step back. Yeah, and, I need more uh, bangers. Yeah, less positivity, more bangers. Yeah, it's like stay quiet and then release a bomb. Yeah, Chad's got it. Yeah. Thank you, dude. Because I was, I was, I was in a quicksand of, I was in the quicksand of self doubt. But yeah. yeah. And stop praising your elliptical machine. And I think you need to take a step back and be like, I'm using an elliptical machine. Well, he doesn't need to lose weight. Why right? he doesn't need to sprint? But you're right. Yeah. Well, sprints build muscle. Yeah. You've seen like sprinters in the Olympics. Well, he doesn't need to do that either. Well, so he needs to maintain. I think yeah. he's maintaining just fine. I mean, what do you? Okay. You, don't, you don't even work out. You do yeah, eight, I do. You do eight minute abs. Yeah, it's a great workout. I recommend it. If you do it right, it works. No stress on the neck, no stress on the back. What does eight-minute abs consist of? I think, uh, I think it's about nine different movements in like 45-second intervals. Yeah, you work everything. The, the obliques, lower abdominals. That's what's up. Yeah, it is what's up. I mean, if you want to feel my abs, can, right. can I feel your abs? See the results, yeah. Are you really going to feel them? Chad's going to feel uh, Joe's abs. I see Joe shirtless all the time, so I already know he's ripped. Joe looks a little nervous. He's flexing hard. He looks the most vulnerable. He's like this whole podcast. How was it, Chad? All right, here's my take. You've got good abs. You've got damn good abs, but if you add sprints to the mix, you'll have abs of steel. I could sprint. I'd be afraid of pulling a hamstring, though. Fear is the something until the something something. Van Wilder. First question from my dog, Reggie. Yo, what up, legends? Long-time listener, first-time questioner. Love the important work you do maintaining our notion, our nation's stoke levels. Keanu would be proud. Thank you, dog. Basically, as two handsome jacked co-workers and co-friends, I desperately want to hear both of your takes on the massive beef between the Fast and Furious franchise co-stars Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Vin Diesel. Wow, how serendipitous. Because we just broke it down on The Rock. I don't know if you keep up with the Bloids, but they freaking hate each other. On Instagram, The Rock called the Groot a chicken shit and a candy ass for some stuff that went down on set and revealed they revealed they refused to share scenes together. Tyrese chimed in in support of Diesel, and now they're spinning off The Rock and Jason Statham in a whole different movie to keep the core franchise together. So whose side you got? Any guesses what drove them apart? Who wins in a real fight? Who's smarter? Who benches more? Who fucks better? I'm begging you to go deep on this because I don't even know myself which meat mountain I should support. Bonus cue. Just saw Incredibles 2 and left with some major pants feelings about Mrs. Incredible, a.k.a. Elastigirl, a.k.a. Mrs. Parr, a.k.a. a bang and flexible male who loves her family and would do anything for her kids and kicks major bad guy ass. What I'm asking is, who's both of your all-time biggest crush on an animated baby? Reggie, this is amazing, dude, because one of the topics we didn't do but I was thinking of was, have you been attracted to an animated character before based off Mrs. Incredible? That's why you're my dog, because we locked in, homie, because we're on the same fucking page. That's what's up, dude. Yes, yes, yes. All right, guys, what do you guys think about The Rock and Vin Diesel's beef? Wow, is is this 
like a new thing or they've been beefing for like a year or two now Whoa. publicly so for years probably before that i haven't been following the beef but uh well so whose side you got i'll run through reggie's questions whose side you got do i have to pick one i gotta go with vin oh really nice loyalty to the franchise that's my yeah, dog yeah why, why Vin? I don't like The Rock coming in and trying to play, like, the fucking general. You're candy ass. Well, this is my franchise, bitch. So, why don't you take your uh, ass and go take a hike? You know? Uh, Toretto is way more, like, you're like, this guy has flaws, you know? This guy is, he's tormented inside. He beat a man to within an inch of his death, and he's dealing with that but he still drives like a beast the rock just comes in and he's like i'm super strong and i can do whatever and i'm also like a super heroic guy and you're like that's not exciting where's the conflict yeah what do you guys think drove them apart probably egos i would i would assume yeah. both of those two have i mean together the other's probably tough. there's not enough room in the room for both of them yeah not enough think. room for that much meat you don't come into yeah. a Corona Fiesta with Heinekens. Yeah, and be like, oh, these are actually better. It's like, well, that's not really what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Who wins in a real life fight? The Rock. Vin. Vin. What? You may know. you may think The Rock because you've seen him wrestle, but that shit's fake, dog. No, it isn't. Who's smarter? Vin. Vin. Who benches more? The Rock. Who fucks better? Vin. Yeah, the Rock's smarter also, by the way. Who fucks better? Um, Vin. I'd give Vin that. All right, so have you guys ever been attracted to an animated lady? Yes. Yeah, Yeah, me too. Who's your all-time fave? Well, I was thinking about this, and um, there was always hot chicks on Beavis and Butthead. Like, they'd be hot. I like that one-eyed Cyclops chick on Futurama. Super hot. I always liked um, the one from The Little Mermaid, Ariel. Oh, oh I was yeah. going to say that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she was hot. And then also the... On the ladder. When the... Jasmine. When the... Was it the... Ursula became the... Dude, she was the hottest. The That's brunette. true. She yeah. was the hottest. What a babe. You, I remember being yeah. a kid and being like, she's bad, and I want it. Yeah. Like, she was like the first, like, seductress I really fell for. Oh. I, uh... I also always was attracted to like kind of like the hot bunnies, like actual like animals, you know, like uh, like the female bunny in um, Space Jam. Nice. Oh, oh is dude, it, is that Babs? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Jessica Rabbit. That's a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, that. she was like the Pam Anderson of uh, animated. All right, we got another question. This one's from Woody. Okay, so there's this girl that I've been talking to for like two months, and we were friends for majority of high school. I'm a junior, but at the party, we but at this party, we really hit it off. We talked for damn near the whole party, and it was great. The next week, I took her to a party, and it was exactly the same. Although this party, I found that she is good friends with my ex. I didn't let that bother me, and time went on, and we still hung out together. And I asked her to prom. The night of prom, everything was going great, but then at the after party, I blacked out. The next morning, I got completely different vibes from her, and it just wasn't the same. I asked people if I did anything stupid, and they said all I said was and all they said was i was just kicking it and smoking bowls we still talk and i still have feelings for it but i feel they are not reciprocated should i try and rekindle whatever flame there was or recast my line into the sea of women i would take a step back i would still stay connected with this lady you know keep talking to her you know but don't but also talk to other ladies you know just so you can take a step back and and uh Maybe uh maybe decrease your interest a little bit so that maybe that might make her more interested in you. If you're just if you're coming at this where you're like, Oh, I'm, I need to like fix this now, I need to figure out what happened, what went wrong, I think that might push her away even more. So if you just take a step back, play it cash, you know, talk to other ladies, you know, just be cool, that might bring her back in. Yeah, I would say if he blacked out, he definitely said or did something that turned her off. Yeah. Yeah, because if he doesn't remember, and probably other people were blacked out too, and they don't even remember. It can just be the face you're making sometimes when you're blacked out. Like, you're just like so drunk, and you're so like, 
Yeah, it's a turn off. Faced. Yeah, you just look yeah, bad. Yeah, especially if the other person's not even close. Yeah. But I don't think it's a deal breaker. I think you can recover from it. I think it. it can be, depending on the on the girl, but, but it shouldn't be, but it can. Well, it's also high school, so it's not like... like especially if they're like looking for a reason to get out of it if they you know absolutely but i think it's high school so it's not like the other guys you're comparing yourself to are like you know 40 year old mortgage brokers yeah, who like never true. lose their cool yeah for high school yeah, yeah you should definitely get a second chance on yeah that. i think i think it's yeah. not and you're, you're drinking i think the key is just to be like a little self-aware about it like maybe be like hey i know i got a little loco the other night but uh that's not really me and i was just burning one off yeah you gotta prom. own up to that yeah yeah, it happened at prom where you yeah. got black. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's you prom gotta night. be like, yeah, it was prom. Let's get past this. So, you know, we were having fun. Yeah, Stifler's Lake House. I mean, we were just getting nuts. Yeah, exactly. Jablam. What up, JT? It's what up, Chad? What up, JT? It's Curtis Boy from the East. Love your show, man. Was wondering if you could give me some advice. Got this Betty on my mind, and we used to date, but don't anymore, and she doesn't answer my text. Been flexing pretty hard in all my posts because I know she follows me on social media. The plan is live a life so spontaneously rad that Bay can't resist the urge to reach out and answer my text. Do you guys think this is a good plan to win back an old love? Much appreciation, Curtis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you're living like a cool, fun-looking life. Yeah. It's gonna attract attention. Yeah, I you, like I like the approach. If you if you look like you're a, a man on a mish, and you're living a, a cool fun life that, you, and you're just like, yeah, I'm doing my thing. I'm on my mish. Um, if you want to tag along, cool. If not, cool. Yeah, that'll, peace. I'll find somebody else. That'll increase attraction. Yeah, I think uh, I, I think this is a foolproof plan. Like I think in the process of living or trying to appear to have a good life, you'll lead a good life, and that. And that if you don't in and the motivation for it won't be as important once you get to the end of it. Like you'll be like, wait, why did I start living this badass life? Oh, it's to impress that chick. But now that my life is so badass, I don't even know if I need her because I'm happy. Yeah, and you're gonna be impressing other people along the way. Yeah, yeah. and you're gonna meet more people and your life's gonna get bigger. Yeah. So whatever motivation you need to be better, use that. Absolutely. All right, we got Borch. I heard your plea to the council the other week, and I was shocked to learn that oysters are a natural aphrodisiac. Seeing that I myself could use a little more love, I took a honey to the shuck shack in the hopes of finding true love. After slurping a couple of those puppies, my back, my throat closed up, and I went into a rough allergic reaction. Ah, oh, damn, dog. Damn. I'm sorry, man. I'm fine now, so everything is cush, but do you have any other suggestions for dudes who are allergic to seafood but crave a woman's companionship? I thought everyone knew about the aphrodisiac thing with oysters. Well, there's other aphrodisiacs out there. Yeah. Chocolate strawberries, dude. Oh, nice. Good one. Dip those strawberries in warm chocolate, and then, you know, then your uh, mojo will be firing, and you'll you'll have a, I forget the word, but your je ne sais quoi will be sexy. Yeah, you don't want to have your throat close up when you're trying to get your Mac on. Another good thing is, like, to get a vibrator. Girls really like that. You get one of the good ones you can get on Amazon. Copy. Yeah, that's good to know. What's up, Chad and JT? Coming up in a few months, I'll be 20. Two decades. Wow. Something to be for sure be grateful and celebratory. for. However, there's just one thing that is harsh in my mellow, if you will, and that's virginity. I had a girlfriend at one point and we did everything else, but the fact that I've never physically banged the noodle for sure lowers my stoke tank. Should I let this get to me or should I just keep moving loving life each day? JT? What's up, dog? So I was a virgin until I was 24. It was, it was a big uh, thorn in my side. It was something that I hid from people. But uh, honestly, man, I think I'm better off for it. It's wonderful that you pushed it off because you only get to experience it once. And when you do it, you'll really be ready. So I wouldn't worry about it too much, man. I mean, just keep doing what you're doing. Try to focus on other things. Improve your life in other places. And when you do lose your virginity, you know, it'll be special, dog. No, I disagree. Well, I, I think you want to, you, you got to lose that virginity. You got to get it done. I mean, I, I lost it at 18, um, which I guess is a fine age, but I feel like that was even late. I mean, we weren't like super exclusive, but I guess she was like my girl, kind of. But like, uh, yeah, it wasn't exactly like a special thing. Do you think it's something that you should value as special? Do you think it's? Do you think it is a special thing? No, I think you got to knock it out. Like uh, riding a bike, you got to get on that bike, even if you fall down. 
Just get on. But learning to ride a bike is a special thing. I guess, but yeah, you, the because the virginity thing is, uh, it can start to wear on you. What? What? He had a girlfriend and they didn't have sex. That's normal. I'm in the middle on this because I lost it. Kind of like it was just kind of like, oh, that was nice. Yeah, when I but, lost it, I was like, thank God. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I wasn't like, oh, this has to be great. I'm like, I need to. Fuck and let's go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, mine probably, it probably would have been better off under more ideal circumstances. Like, I was just kind of, we were just kind of like drunk and I was just like, oh, that was boning. Okay. So maybe if it was a little more romantic, that would have been a little bit like cooler. Cause I don't like look back, I'm like, oh, that was the best night ever. I'm just like, oh. Yeah, I did it in a car. <laughs> it's great. No, mine was awesome. We were like in a hotel room. She had an orgasm. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, she did. I didn't believe her, but she did. Bullshit. No, she did. I didn't believe her, but she did. It, it, is, it, it is. I do like your perspective on it. We had already said we loved each other. I didn't say we, that. We cried afterwards. Mine was much more like Joe's. It's very, uh, what up? I was just, yeah, I was excited to get it over with. I wasn't like, oh, this is going to be amazing. You don't want to be a virgin. <laughs> Aiden. What up, JT and Chad? Feel like switching up, giving equal shout outs to you two amazing dudes. What up, dog? So my longtime girlfriend broke up with me on the first day of summer break, and it was a total bummer. She's been dealing with some mental health stuff and feels like she needs to focus on herself. And I have my own batch of shit, too. I'm writing this in the lobby of my therapist. Shout out to her. What up? She said that at the end of summer, we might reevaluate and get back together. My problem is that I'm so busy being heartbroken that I don't have summertime fun, nor am I working on improving myself. I haven't even been listening to the pod, and I'm only getting back on the backlog now. And since it's completely up in the air and whether we get back together, I can either just be flat out bummed nor bummed at all. So it's sort of worse than if she'd flat out broken up with me. So what else should I do? Any tips on getting over a Betty? I don't want to rebound because I want to be able to get back with her. And also, I'm weird and introverted and shit, so a fling isn't really my vibe and probably wouldn't work out anyways. I'm so fucking pumped right now, dudes, and don't know how to... I'm so fucking bummed, not pumped. You're the opposite. And I don't know how to go on. Thanks, Aiden. Oh, this guy nuts. Summer just started. You gotta get out there. Go. What do you think she's doing? Sitting at home reading? Waiting for you? This guy's gotta get out there. Agreed. At least try and get sucked. You, you know, you could be like, okay, I don't want to bang these other girls, but at least get... Dude, I love the perspective of your advice. It's so... <laughs> Dude, yeah. Because what do you think she's doing? I, she, it's the summer. She wants to... Dude, I, I, I she love... She wants what, to see what dicks are swinging, you know? I love what you're saying, Joe, because I think you have a much more, like, hard uh, take on it, but yeah. I think it's very well-meaning behind it. You yeah, know? I mean, it's, she's like, going to be like a... Tarzan, like, swinging on different dicks. You know, or Jane, if you will. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if she will be, but I do agree with you that he needs to be out there living life. Like, you can't just be wasting your time, especially this prized short time, like pining for somebody that might not care yeah, about you. Yeah, the summer's, yeah. you know, you got to use it. While, you know, it goes quick. You got to. And then the negative self talk that, like, I'm weird and shit. Like, everybody's weird and shit. Everyone yeah. who's yeah, competing yeah, you, with you for girls is weird and, and you shit. And you can't use, yeah. uh, mental uh whatever health what did you say mental excuse. health is an excuse like if you if if you're if you love somebody and you want to hang out with them you don't take breaks like that yeah you would use that to help your mental health like yeah. you, you like you're that's that's a cop out you're you're saying that cuz and also you're almost saying that like I need to get away from you cuz you're not good for my mental health in a way you're saying that so it's like, uh, I, I just, don't make a face because that's he, true. He, I'm a good. Uh, he needs he needs a, to take animals. action. Yeah, take action. Get out there. You should check out a YouTube channel, Charisma on Command, dude. Yeah, if if, if you're ever to... with somebody and they say, um, "I need to get my mental health together," that means they don't love you. <laughs> no, that's a huge exact. That's not necessarily true. I, I think it's part of it. I, I, I well, think obviously some, they're some, having issues. Some people, some people do not all people, but also. Like, 
if you're going through stuff mentally, you want you need to be around somebody that's going to help you get through it. And uh, yeah, be, being in your own head isn't going to solve it. Yeah, you need but, to get yeah. out there and take action. I don't. I don't disagree. I've used like I've been like I've told girls I was like, look, I have to break up because I'm a sex addict and I need to focus on my recovery. And I was just lying because I just didn't want to date the person. And it was like it was a it was a lie of convenience. Like I took something that was like yeah, actually wrong. But not every situation is that. I mean, all we know uh, is the yeah, girls have. <laughs> all we know is the girl has mental health problems. We don't know like what how she broke it off with a guy, why she broke it off with a guy or, or what she actually is doing. But I do agree. It doesn't matter. The guy needs to live his own life. Yeah. Yeah. Cause she's basically like, I want to get f- fucked by more guys than you. <laughs> Joe, what is your movie quote of the week? Go to Chad first. Cause I, uh, Chad, what is your movie quote of the week? Um, all right. I got mine. Can I go? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to look it up for a second. Um, it's uh, it's from D two, The Mighty Ducks. Nice, great movie. You guys know that movie? Yeah, um, of course. Yeah, there's a line that um, one of the guys, like once they were starting to get uh, like sponsorship and all this stuff, I, I forget who the guy was, but he said to Gordon Bombay, he goes, "Life can be great if you know the right people." And, uh, I mean, that's really a great, because there's a lot of, there's a few different ways you can look at that. It's like, uh, you you know, if you know people with power and influence, you know, they can help you. But also if you have, like, great friends and a great family, life loads great. So there's a couple different ways of looking at that line. But generally speaking, yeah, if you know the right people in life, your your life's going to be pretty awesome. So... I thought that was a great line. That was a good line. I think that's the best of the Mighty Ducks movies. Yeah, the second one was great. Because best bad guy. The Iceland guys? Yeah. Yeah, they were cool. But yeah, I mean, the uh, the first one was great, too. What, what about this quote from number two? After uh, USA beats Iceland, the one Iceland kid, spoiler alert, the Iceland kid goes, he goes, you lost it. He goes, you lost it for yourself. Let's go shake their hands. Oh, yeah, to the coach? Yeah. Yeah. That coach was a badass. He's an animal. Chad, what is your movie quote of the week? Okay, mine's from uh, the movie Step Brothers. Great movie. When my dog, uh, when Derek, who's the the brother of, uh, the brother of Will Ferrell uh, in Step Brothers, he's talking to the dad and he's like, he's like, yeah, dude, I got my real estate license for shits and gigs and I'll even do it for four-fifths commish because you know what really gets my dick hard? Helping out my friends. Nice. That's awesome. And I think he just really hit the money there about, you know, like there's a lot of different ways to get your dong hard. It probably feels the best, you know, when you're like, wow, I helped this guy find a new house and I only charged him four-fifths commish. This boner was earned, you know? For sure. Helping others is the key to, uh, I think, um you know, long lasting and quality erections. My uh, movie quote of the week is uh, from the movie 10 things I hate about you. Nice. Yeah. It's uh, at the end when uh, Heath Ledger's character, Patrick has a uh, kind of uh he's making it up to Julia Stiles for dating her with uh, ugly intentions at first. Cause he was getting paid to date her. So he makes it up to her at the end of the movie. So he buys her a guitar and she goes into her car and she's like, oh my God, a guitar. And then they start making out and they're all joyous to be back together. And you know, they belong together. So it's a good time. And then she stops kissing him and Cat Stratford, who's a real pistol goes, you can't just buy me a guitar every time you screw up, you know? And then fucking Heath Ledger, the man, Patrick looks back at her and he goes, yeah, no. But then, you know, there's always drums and bass and maybe even one day a tambourine. <laughs> Bang, dude. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I like it any time. The love of your life like challenges you and is like, oh, you're actually like not the shit. And then the guy goes, no, I am the shit. Yeah, that's yeah. why you love me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Joe gets it. Yeah, I get it. Is that it? That's it. Guys, that was episode 24 of the Going Deep with Chat JT podcast. Thank you so much for writing in, for listening, for being stokers. Big thank you to our dog, Joe. Chad, hey. JT, thank you. This was a lot of fun. You're guys. a legend. You're a legend, dude. And uh, guys, keep writing in. 
Uh, if you're on iTunes, leave us a review. We love reviews. And um, just keep uh, stay stoked, guys. Stay stoked. We'll see you next week. Later. Thank you. One, two, three, four.